Next up, we do have to talk about Bethesda's E3 conference. There weren't a whole lot in the ways of new IPs. However, there are a few things we do need to talk about. For starters, there is a new system called Orion that they plan on integrating into all of their games as they plan on making it open and open sourced. That being said, they plan on having it integrated into most game engines. And one of the primary things that they argued for this was that it would lead to a 20% processing speed increase per frame and 40% less bandwidth, allowing you to be able to stream games with a much higher frame rate. The demo that they showed on screen was of the 2016 version of Doom. The scene in itself was rather action intensive. And during that scene, it showed very little evidence of latency or lag of any kind. That being said, they also included a link on screen, uh, slayers slayersclub.com, where you'll be able to learn more about streaming not only Doom 2016, but a few other games along the lines. Then the other, one of the other games that's been on people's minds are Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6. While he did mention that they are being worked on, he didn't give any mention as far as what point in the development they were in. So we could be waiting anywhere from, well, years or maybe even decades, depending on how, how much time and energy they want to put into those games. As far as as far as elephants in the room are concerned, they did talk about Fallout 76. He specifically mentioned that it did have a rough launch. However, they also mentioned that over the last year, many players have proven to be nice to each other, leaving food and water out for new players. However, one of the major things that we can expect is something called the Wastelanders update. This is going to be a free update wherein you'll be able to find human NPCs that will come with quests, choices, dialogue trees, and all sorts of storytelling. You can expect this for free in the fall. And in this, you'll be able to expect an upcoming game mode called Nuclear Winter. It's yet another in a long line of Battle Royale game modes. but this one, as opposed to PUBG or Fortnite or Apex, this one is going to be an additional mode in addition to the standard open world that we are used to playing in Fallout 76. The next one is Elder Scrolls Blades. One of the few things that they plan on adding to the game are solo arena battles, a dragon based quest line, and PvP multiplayer with visiting players towns and all of that is going to be ported later to Switch this year for free. And one thing we can look forward to is crossplay and cross progression with mobile with exclusive E3 giveaways for mobile players. So if you want to if you already have the game, you will be able to get a, a free loot pack on your on the Android store or Apple iOS for free. Now as far as new projects go, there was a mobile game that they called Commander Keen, originally designed by id Software in the early 90s. The entire thing seems like a, a cartoonish 2D platformer with a story mode and drag and drop mechanics. Like I said, it's going to be done on it's going to be done on mobile and it will provide in-game bonuses. One of the other things that we can look forward to is an update to Elder Scrolls Legends and a Moons of, Moons of Elsewhere expansion coming up. On Rage 2, we can expect the Rise of the Ghost expansion, 
bringing new enemies, places to explore, pilotable mechs, gameplay modes, vehicles, stories, weapons, and abilities. So you'll be able to enjoy yourself in far more ways than ever before. And then on top of that, we have Wolfenstein Youngblood on top of Wolfenstein Cyber Pilot. Pilot. While I'm sure by now you know all about Cyber Pilot and that it's a Wolfenstein Nazi Killing VR game that is going to be launching next month, we also have Youngblood, which is going to be a co-op able Nazi killer set in Paris in 1980, launching on the 26th on PC, Xbox, Switch, and the PlayStation. And then Doom Eternal, that one was available for play at E3, however it's launching for the rest of us on November 22nd. And one thing I can look forward to, as well as you, is a collector's edition set to be available which would include a life-size Doom helmet that you can in fact wear. And more information about that is going to be coming to QuakeCon later this summer in June in Dallas and July in London. As far as the new IPs are concerned, one of them is called Deathloop, set during what the French would call the Time of Madness. Two rivals, Colton and Juliet, play the, antagon play the antagonist trying to kill the other to either end or continue a cycle through a mind-bending story and creative open-ended story. So there will be choices, there will be consequences. And I'm not sure really which one you will be playing as, or if you'll really have a choice. But up until then, there is no evidence of a launch date, so <coughs> we'll have to wait a little bit longer to find out what's going on there. The only other new intellectual property that they talked about was Ghostwire Tokyo, an action adventure where you would rid the city of supernatural horrors. People are vanishing there in Tokyo, and it's up to you to find out why. I believe that's a good place to end the video. If you guys liked it, let me know. If you hated it, let me know. And as always, don't forget to tell me how I'm such a horrible person for giving you all this news.